Welcome everyone, it's August 8th, 2022. This is Jenkins Governance Meeting. And thanks for being here. Topics I've got on the agenda include news, action items, Blue Ocean Admonition, CDF interactions. We'd had that in a past session, our CDF topics, let's call it that. Uh, and forums and community topics. Anything else that needs to be added to the agenda? Maybe the website. Oh, oh, yes, that's a good question. Okay, Jenkins.io website. All right, good. Anything else? Maybe it makes sense uh, to discuss a JSOC, but on the other hand, it's uh, too early. Okay, so Google Summer of Code. And uh, so we include the topic, Oleg, and then you can decide as we get there if what level yeah. you want to discuss it at. Any other topics? No. Okay. All right, so let's let's go up to the top then and take on the news first. So the next long-term support release will release two days from now, Wednesday, the 10th of August, thanks to Alex Brandis as the release lead. Uh, not seen any negative feedback or any comments on the release candidate. In addition, we've got the next baseline selected, 2.361.1 will be released September the 7th. It will require Java 11 or Java 17, no more Java 8 support. Uh, thanks to Chris Stern as the release lead. Chris is a, a Google Summer of Code mentor who is being, being actively involved in other areas. This is his first opportunity as a release lead for a Jenkins release. Uh, other item was we had Southern California Linux Expo. I gathered 40 plus email addresses of people that want to, may want to help Jenkins. I'm gonna try and experiment there by sending them a personal email, inviting them to help and see if they'll interact. Uh, I don't know what the results will be, we'll see. And then last time, Basel, Basel, you had noted progress on the Jakarta mail migration. Anything additional you want to highlight there? Oh, I see your mic's unmuted, but we're not. He I'm not hearing anything, Basel. Okay, I see a shake of head no, so we'll leave it as is for now. And if there's a topic, you can message us in the chat. Great, thank you. All right, then open action items. We've got one that I actually completed. The blog post for She Code Africa is done now. Uh, the others I haven't completed, and it's going to be several weeks still before I get to them. Gavin, we did have one for you on create a funding proposal for the Blue Ocean Admonition, but I think we're settled with that already. Are you okay that I just listed that one as done? Uh, well, I thought, I didn't know we were actually going ahead with that. Oh, good. Okay. So, right. So you had, I had just put a note in the last meeting. Yeah, I didn't actually watch the video. <laughs> okay. No, no problem. Uh, are you okay with the Blue Ocean admonition that we currently have? Sorry, Oleg, what did you say? Yeah, I was just wondering, is this proposal on the mailing list or where? Because I haven't seen it. I haven't done anything yet. It was uh, I oh. sent an email to Mark saying, I'm thinking about doing this. And then all of a sudden, lots of things happened. And I'm like, cool. Um, I think the existing improvements to the Jenkins IO pages are definitely a step in the right direction um you know if i had my way i'd rip the entire thing out i don't i want it gone but i think what is there is probably better or closer to good enough for now but i do think based on the fact that we have money and we that we never spend and it is a it's never going to be handled by volunteers because it's so big it is something that we should look into but i don't have the energy to push that proposal right now Okay, so then I'm gathering that we don't really need to carry forward an action item on that one. Let's yeah. 
we'll look at the blue ocean admonitions, some examples. If I want, yeah, if I actually wanted to actually hire someone and things like that, I would have put up a bigger post than just a side comment. So Got it. I do think it's worthwhile doing, but not now, not. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, good. While we're covering things I might have missed, was there wasn't there an action item for Algolia as well? Uh, they're not in this meeting's notes, but we can certainly okay. put it there. It well, is it must have been on the forums. It's fine. Yeah. So, so Mark or Gavin, update the Algolia search configuration. I just went to search for the government notes, so it wouldn't have to be just you typing everything out. And I realized that the search doesn't return anything for government or nothing, nothing useful for governance. Okay. So. Yeah, and again, it's a hint. We've got improvements to be made there. Let me put it into the chat. I'll put the notes. No, no I, I, I got it. I'm good. Oh, you do? Okay, yeah. good. All right. It's in my, it's in my, my bookmark. I was just lazy. Got it. Okay. So we do have an, we do need to take an action. It's tracked as a, as a help desk ticket right now. Um, to remind us that we need to make that, but I think Gavin, you and I may be the only two people with permissions to do those changes on the Algolia search definition because we're using their doc search facility. Yeah. Well, I'll follow up. I'll try to make it to one of the docs office hours and follow up. Great, thank you. Anything else on action items? Uh, I want to see less Mark in this list. Not so much that Mark's not getting things done, but I don't like the fact that Mark's doing everything. I, I, fair enough. Yep. For the Blue Ocean uh, admonition, I'm, I'm not sure if I missed this, but is there is there a canonical example of the current state of Blue Ocean support that I could refer to if people ask? There is, actually. We've tried to capture it in this admonition here, and Here's what it says. It says Blue Ocean will not receive further functional update, functionality updates. Blue Ocean will continue to provide easy to use pipeline visualization, but will not be enhanced further. It will only receive selective updates for significant security issues or functional defects. And then we give some alternatives and some recommendations in the admonition. And then subsections of this admonition are used in other places in the documentation that refer to Blue Ocean. Um, would be nice to have an anchor here because it would be super helpful and maybe also adding it to the plugin documentation. That was my next point. Uh, is, uh, I don't think that it was intentional to omit this from the plugin docs, but if, 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 uh, if no one is against adding it there as well, I would like to take the action item to put this admonition on the plugin site as well. Um, the, the same text as you just showed me. I like that. If, you, if you're if you willing to take that action, that'd be great. I think that makes a lot of sense. It's it's good to have it in the Jenkins.io documentation, even better to put it on the plugins page. Yeah. yeah. And bonus points for updating Docker Hub because uh, there is a Jenkins CI fault organization uh, blue ocean image, which is still being uh, pulled sometimes and it's uh, way dated. So it would be nice uh, to push uh, the new documentation there, even if you change it manually. Yeah, just for a bit of context while Mark is typing, um, there was a couple of threads about people having trouble with Blue Ocean, especially after the last update. And I reached out to Mark and say, hey, do you think it's worth me writing up a proposal? Which then triggered all these discussions. But really, just I was, I was frustrated that the answer to most of the time when people are like, I'm having trouble with Blue Ocean is, don't use blue ocean um it's not being maintained they're like well why didn't you tell me this earlier and i'm like I, I i don't know so um yeah i think any improvements in that regard is good but i also think the long-term goal is to stop recommending it to people which is going to be the hard part yeah and that gavin that's a place where i think you and i disagree i'm not ready to to not recommend it to people because we don't have an alternative yet. Uh, the pipeline graph visualization yeah. is is just too weak for the visualization piece. 
the and other tools are good enough for the creation part and the diagnosis part, but visualization is still just not good enough. And I'm not comfortable recommending something that's not maintained. I, I understand, right? And that that's you, whether like or not for, there's new functionality or not. It's that flat line. If it's not maintained, I should. I don't think we should suggest people using it. So, anyways, but that's uh, another discussion for another day. Um, right. The point was that this will help a lot in those those support requests when people come in and say, "Hey, this isn't working." We're like, "Yeah, unfortunately, you're in a weird place. Uh, these are your suggested alternatives, and we can leave it at that for now." Agreed. Yeah. So, so the we had long ago on this on the Docker Hub entry, we had long ago um, shifted the Jenkins documentation to not refer to this blue ocean image. But that doesn't mean people don't still have references to that image. They do. And so needs a link to the official docs and uh, the include the embed the admonition. Because the official docs no longer, they used to use this custom image. They no longer do that. They use the standard Jenkins image now. Anything else on the blue ocean admonition? Okay. Next then was CDF topics. So um, mm -hmm. Gavin and I were, I think it was Gavin and I were involved in a conversation. Oh no, Tim Jacome and I were involved in a conversation with Fatih about a possible blog post highlighting the contents of the next LTS baseline. And so I took the action item that the docs will provide a highlights blog post mm -hmm. for CDF. I think that makes sense to let CDF help us promote things. Yeah, it would make sense at the same time, uh, keep in mind that uh, there is a bunch of other activities happening right now. So my assumption would be that uh, end of August and beginning of September would be quite busy for Roxanne. Uh, so I'm not sure whether you will get published uh, on short notice. So earlier the matter. Ah, good, okay. Great. So then Oleg, you had added the CDF uh, Technical Oversight Committee and Technical Oversight Committee chair elections. Was yeah. there something so, more you wanted to highlight there? Yeah, so just quick update. Uh, we officially extended the terms of project representatives uh, to two years. So we reached out uh, to other projects not represented on uh, the TOC and nobody was against. Uh, so it means uh, that I will stay a Jenkins representative there for the next year, unless uh, there is uh, a desire to change this representative. Uh, another thing that, uh, yeah, we also had TOC chair elections. Uh, so I will also remain a TOC chair for the next year. So it's just for your information, uh, what it means that I will be representing uh, uh, Jenkins, etc., on the CTF governing board, where we talk about topics like infrastructure budgets. Kind of reminder uh, to you, Mark, that uh, the cloud based representative doesn't participate. Uh, so right now it's me kind of channeling cloud based as well, but uh, I'm not employed by the company. Thanks. Thanks for the reminder. I've got it on my board to do, and I'll, I'll certainly talk with him to see if we want to make a switch. Would you have any objection if, or are there any bylaws, things that I need to be worried about if I were to propose that I take that position instead of, instead of um, the current? Just uh, for your company. Okay, great. So it's, it's, a, it's anyone from CloudBees, and, and that's a choice that CloudBees can make. Yeah. Great. All right. Thanks. Mm, yeah, but so for the governing board, uh, in general, uh, uh, there is not that much happening right now. Uh, there is a bunch of discussions. There will be also mini summit in September uh, with assumption that uh, some people will come there, but uh, uh, yeah, I won't. So which, which summit in September? 
uh, oh, mini summit. mini summit on uh, September 12th. Actually, it's in Dublin. Okay. So Fatih has sent out uh, the call for papers for that. I have, I'm not sure whether they picked up it in Jenkins social media. Um, uh, but yeah, most. Uh, so it's still open, I believe. And uh, just a second, I'm looking for this uh, the deadline, but I'm pretty sure it's still open. Probably Stephen or Tom finally would like to speak about Jenkins because it's not that far for them. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to, I'll, I'll, I'll do some poking and see. Mm. I'm just checking what's uh, the deadline right now. Uh, August 10th is the deadline. Okay. Uh, so what else uh, do you have? So we yeah, one thing uh, to keep in mind that uh, Project Persia was accepted to the Continuous Delivery Foundation. I mean, uh, it was official since uh, the last week. Project Persia is a distributed package delivery network with major contributors, uh, JFrog, Deploy Hub, uh, um, Canonical, and several other companies. Uh, so there is no direct overlap uh, in Jen with Jenkins, uh, but uh, it's still an important part of the ecosystem. Docker also participates, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, so um, the idea is quite simple. Uh, they want to generalize uh, basically the protocols, etc., to build a kind of CDN for artifacts. And uh, I believe that JFrog, etc., have clear interest in having enterprise implementations for that. Same for Docker. Okay. Uh, so one thing, so above there is action item for you, Mark, about uh, migrating to Bebe. So good news that you can pause the section item for now, uh, because uh, now there are second thoughts about uh, adopting Bebe in the continuous delivery foundation. So the reason is that currently it's a low tier uh, um, uh, tariff plan, which basically prevents uh, many baby functionality from being available. And it uh, makes basically no sense to adopt baby in the current state. Okay, so we can, you sure you're okay? It is okay then if we pause that. Uh, well, we were kindly asked to post uh, in other activities because uh, right now the Continuous Delivery Foundation is not sure it will fulfill on the, the baby contract. Great. Good to know. Thank you. Uh, because, uh, yeah, if we switch to enterprise tariff of baby, uh, it will be more expensive than uh, Zoom and meetup.com combined. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I guess this is all from the CDF. Thank you. So you had added another one, Oleg, on the status of Easy CLA. I think it's oh, a good open question. That was me. Oh, that was Gavin. Okay, so Gavin, help help me out with that one. I don't know the answer to this. That's why I wanted to put it on the agenda. Yeah, well, for now, it's the, you have to do the right answer, just approve and you pull request. So do we validate uh, the documentation, but I have never submitted the pull request. Okay. So the idea was that since we have everything enabled for easy CLE, just to update the documentation, we think that uh, we are still waiting for Cloud Bees and others uh, to submit the easy CLE. Hello, Mark. Uh, so I didn't hurry with that, and basically it was uh, long on. Well, it uh, was on my back burner, but uh, if we are fine, I can proceed with that. Well, we had two new um, CLAs come in this week, which I mean it happens like once or twice a year, um, and as far as someone told me, the thing is just approve them, but I can't validate them. 
Um, so I just want to make sure the process is documented that I'm just going to mm -hmm. approve them when they look fine to me, but I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, I think that you can just approve for now yeah. because for me, just the fact of commit is enough to be honest. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I understand that uh, legally speaking, it's not something uh, you would like, but whatever. It just makes me feel uncomfortable to approve and merge a PDF that I can't read. So okay, that's why I can I'm uh, check from my account. Uh, does it request a review from me, by the way? Because I don't see uh, if it's on my dashboard, I have missed it, but most likely it's not on my dashboard. Uh, you can go close, Mark. I, I merged them already. Ah, okay, good. All right. So here it was. Am I closed? Am I in code So for Yaroslav, for instance. Sure. Yeah. So I've been getting people to also sign the easy CLA just so that when we move over, it's done. But yeah, essentially there was a there's an encrypted PDF there, which I'm like, yeah, you committed. I'm gonna assume it's right and submit and merge. Mm -hmm. no, uh, I have a key for that. Uh, Olivier had a key as an infrastructure officer. I'm not sure whether it was transferred to domain. Yeah, I don't know either. That's why I put it on the agenda. It's just because it's such a fuzzy process right now, and I don't know what we should be doing. Good I don't mind good. doing the approvals. <laughs> I just don't know what, what we should be doing, right? Yeah, I think we just... So if everyone is fun, I will try to find some time and to get it over the line with documentation. Because whatever it is. I am fine with that. Yeah, I'm I'm happier if Easy CLA comes in. I have to do no work. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if they can't come in, I just want to make sure that we are clear on what these steps are. If we do have to do work, just like Debbie and everything else, just make sure we're clear in the state. All right. Anything else on Easy CLA? Sorry for the, uh, that is taking so long. Yeah, no problem. So Jenkins.io website, Gavin, um, is this about the, the UI, uh, the look and feel change or something different? Yeah, uh, just because there's a bit of debate and I figure it's going to get really heated really quickly. Um, so there was a, correct me when I'm wrong here, but there was a new PR a couple of weeks ago uh, it was merged last week that adds some new let's say skinning to the website so it's you know a bit more white space a bit more clear cl clarity um a new background that kind of thing um the new the front page does look really nice um that being said there are a number of bugs reported for various other parts of the site that don't work right um i know daniel has specifically requested that it gets rolled back until the things are fixed because the fact is that we're only fixing things like once a week, one small thing once a week, and it kind of makes a mess. Um, and normally I would say government, the government governance doesn't need to get involved in these kind of things. But uh, since it's like, a no, it affects a number of sites and a number of pages and it's not being repaired in a pretty rapid way. To me, it has a lot of the, concerns about it being going stale and not being fixed and we're in a broken state and considering I spent the last like three years trying to clean up all these failed unfinished projects I'm actually slightly thinking we should go with Daniel's thing and say revert until it can be fixed properly so I don't know it's just something I thought it would be worth bringing up in the governance and and so you highlighted it very nicely the one of my my initial response was, oh, no, I don't want to revert. But the more I looked at it, and after discussing it in Doc's Office Hours Asia last week, I came back to the, oh, no, maybe we should revert just because it's 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 a bigger change than we may have been ready to take on. And, if, and the if revert was, is clean now. If all the issues were fixed in a day or two, I would have been like, yeah, let's just roll forward. But it's now been a week. You know, we're getting like one fix in one week. 
to fix one issue it like i said it, it makes me concerned that it's going to be like six months from now and we're not going to finish this upgrade and i don't think it's an upgrade until it's finished right so well and rolling back does not stop us from using the work of the original contributor yeah. to try to do incremental steps of yeah. things that we can do stepwise small steps see does yeah. this have the desired result yeah okay. so i'm not like i said i'm not really sure it's a governance thing but it is um i can feel it getting heated and i think it would be worth discussing great so so can i ask for input from others kevin i know as as a docs contributor you've you've had some thoughts and we talked in docs office hours europe Basel, Oleg, anything you'd like to offer insights on? Uh, for me, I think it's, uh, it's just hearing Gavin's point of view and seeing all, like the issues that have come up and stuff, um, having some time to reflect. I, I definitely see the, the value in reverting it and kind of small steps that become more effective over time as opposed to the, the size of this change that wasn't really, I, I wasn't aware of it at least since I didn't have any uh, visibility into it, but yeah. Um, I can see I can see the value in reverting instead of like really pushing this one. Okay, others. I'm in favor of reverting as well. Okay, so then I'm gonna I, and I I think in this case to to Gavin's does it need to go to governance? I'm gonna kick in my I'm the docs officer and therefore I think I get to arbitrate this one. I'm gonna say yes, we're gonna revert and try to bring it forward as a series of of small changes later. Yeah. Great, thanks. Okay. Um, any objections or or feeling that this is that I'm out of line taking that approach? Okay, good. Thanks, everybody. Next topic then, Google Summer of Code. Why me? Uh, well, or whoever, is it, Oleg, you had put it on the topic. The question was, was there Am something I? specific or or that you would like? I don't think that they put it there. Oh, okay, then, then I will happily take it off because I think it's premature right now. We're in progress and all four projects are are making progress. And uh, we had the midterm presentation. It was workable, et cetera. Evaluations have been submitted for the midterm. So I'll just call that one as a done topic for today, unless there's other things that you'd like to note. Okay. Next topic then, Gavin. Oh, my fat fingers. Here we go, forum and community topics. I'm muted. Um, I'm going to go dig because I forgot to pull up them. There's three topics though that I didn't add, so we can talk about those for now. So how about if while you're digging, I'll talk to those and and I can take the 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 Java 11 transition issues for core. There was a, a user on Windows on community.jenkins.io that had a firewall configured to only allow Java 8 through the firewall. And Windows Firewall is apparently sophisticated enough to allow you to lock firewall transition for specific applications. And because the application was configured to only allow Java 8 through the firewall, when they switched to Java 11, their controller couldn't connect to their agents anymore. And it's like that was a very novel, novel condition that I'd never, never considered. Like, wow. But once that was resolved, they seemed to get it settled and worked through it just took quite a bit of back and forth to understand it Is then there were that the one i think also they that user also switched to a 32-bit version of dev 11 so maybe the binary path was changed that may have been also why the firewall had two issues could, could be yes and that i'm not sure of it so they there were they had they did have a 32-bit they mentioned a 32-bit java 11 agent um and I wasn't sure if that was a required oh, or a. There's an update to that thread about an hour ago where they said they switched to the 
thing at work. Ah, good. Okay, so. great. So for me, it was a it was a a good story to see. Hey, there are some subtleties in this Java 11 transition that are not actually Java 11, but they're just any transition. Had they gone to Java 17, they'd have had the same same challenge. Had they all, all sorts of potential issues there. Then we've had two, two surprises in the plugin world. Uh, we released a host key verification fix and it relied on OpenSSH version 7.6 and newer. Unfortunately, CentOS 7 and AWS Linux 2 both deliver CentOS or both deliver OpenSSH 7.4, which is too old for what the option these things needed. So we switched the, some configuration shipped a new version of the plugin and think we've got it resolved. And then the TriLead API plugin um, inadvertently shipped Java 11 class files without declaring a dependency on a Jenkins version that mandated Java 11. So it's been blocked from the update center, but there's still some, some noise. And if you look at the at the issue that's linked here, you'll see the kind of noise that's happening just by counting the number of duplicates. That gives us the first hint that, yeah, this one generated a lot of, oh, wow, ouch. And it highlights that we still got many users who run Java 8. We need to keep banging on the drum to remind people that they should upgrade to Java 11. The new LCS release, I guess it's a matter, uh, well, until, when we have a new security release, people uh, will uh, be forced to upgrade. They so. will, they, they truly will have no choice, right? There's, you've got to upgrade to Java 11 in order to run Jenkins 2.361.1. Mm. So yeah. Gavin captured one, this is a, Gavin, do you want to describe it? Um. Yeah, sure. There's a, actually, I don't remember a lot about it, but there was, I think this was a licensing one. Yeah. So uh, Daniel Beck flagged a uh, plugin that was using the wrong, a non-open source license. According to our agreements, we don't host plugins that don't have open source license. I think this is the case of a plugin using a library that doesn't have it, not the plugin itself. Um, so he submitted a PR to suspend it. We hadn't heard anything back in a week. Two weeks, two weeks now, I think. So we suspended it last week. Great. Um, I think it's a fairly new plugin too. So I don't think it's going to affect a lot of users. Um, well, there's also uh, my ongoing uh, attempt to get a vendors portal running. Um, not much progress from the last time, just poking around, trying out a few things, that kind of thing. Um, there's a couple of old threads that are being uh, brought brought back to life, but didn't really go anywhere. So there is a thread on the forums about a uh, complete Jenkins tutorial. Uh, I moved it to the showing off category so um, people can find it easier. Um, there was a thread about, uh, and I think Mark followed up on it, but uh, how plugins are verified that they're not security holes which I think is something that we could potentially uh, document better. Mostly it's at your own risk, but it might be better to have an official signing page. Um, and then there is a discussion about communication channels. Um, I'm focusing on that side. I'm focusing on the actual like live chat channels. So uh, I've been trying to see if I can get one channel that has IRC, Gitter, and Matrix all in the same room. So more of a, like a, a test. That way we can kind of merge a bunch of the live chat channels and then we can start working on figuring out what we want to do for the non-live chat ones. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit heated of a discussion from what's been done so far. Right, and and certainly there there are strong opinions held on on all sides of it, right? Um, other than that, I don't see anything, and I don't remember anything in the forums. Um, oh, I guess the only other thing, more of an action item, 
Uh, every once in a while, there's plugin development type questions on the forums. Um, is there interest in me making it or trying to see if it can auto email the mailing list? Or should I just email the mailing list and say, hey, we probably need more hands here? So would you, you're thinking of automatically emailing the Jenkins developer list? Yeah. So right now, when you post something to like the SIG docs uh, tag in, on Discourse, it puts it in the SIG docs uh, Gitter room. I'm just wondering if we want to do the same thing for any code related things. I kind of so, don't. Hmm? Go ahead. Excuse me. I kind of worried about being automatic because I think people will start asking tech questions to the dev list that way. But so far, it's been pretty good. People haven't been using the code uh, category without it actually being contributing related. But yeah, I'm I'm hesitant specifically because of the volume of developer list spam that I end up having to reject because it's not developer topics. And, ah, and I don't see that, so I didn't know how bad it was. Yeah, and it's it's not huge. It's maybe one or two a week, but but I would really like to not have spam arriving on the Jenkins developer list. It's it's been reasonably well defended by yeah. those of us who are moderators on it, and and so for me, I'd rather not, at least for now. Yeah, sounds good. Then I'll just do it manually a few times it comes up. Right. Great. Any other topics that we need to discuss? Approach is, I mean, we'll approach is a good place to start because if that works out well, we could then make that automatic, but mm. there's no reason to rush. Sorry, what was the beginning of that sentence? Oh, uh, I think the manual approach is a good place to start. And there's oh, no okay. Rush, but we could definitely, I mean, if it's working out well doing it manually, then I think the next step would be definitely to automate it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's about one a month. So two a month. So it hasn't been an issue so far. Right. Good. Very good. Um, press wise, I'm wondering if we want to make the press. Ah, oh, I get a lot of spam on the press email, which is which is fine. It's kind of the only only real email on the check in site, which is fine. Uh, but it's ongoing. Of I think there's a lot of uh, the. Press contacts are not really engaged with the project anymore. So it's like KK and R. Tyler and someone else. And I'm wondering if we just want to redirect all those press inquiries to the board and leave it like that. Um, the only real non spam, because mostly it's just like, do we want, uh, it's just spam about posting blog articles for money or getting money or being paid money, something like that. Um, the only uh, the one only one recently that came to the press that was useful was uh, Postman, which was really more of an advocacy partnership one, which to me makes more sense as a board discussion as, as opposed to me as individual, or maybe mm -hmm. we can have our advocacy take over press email. And we just have a Google group or something. I don't know. This is one of those things that uh, I tried to see if we can get that directly imported into the forms, but I had trouble because we don't have um, incoming email support for Jenkins.io domains. So don't know. Just I mean, it's not something we need action. I just want to make sure that I bring it up. Right. Yeah. So so I'm hesitant to put it on advocacy right now, just because there's there okay there are more of us on advocacy than press contacts. Uh, me, Alyssa, Bruno are typically attending advocacy sessions. Yeah. Um, but I know. Are, are you okay with the status quo? Are you okay with things as they are for right now, just holding as, and then- As long as we understand that I'm deleting most of the ones that come in and say, hey, do you want to have a, a blog post? Which means I might miss a legit one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, other than that, I don't care. Okay. I All mean, right. they're pretty obvious, you know? Yeah, and I do something similar with the spam that arrives to the board. Usually yeah. those are commercial commercial engagement attempts trying to ask us to buy something in mm -hmm. uh, usually in Asian language, oddly enough. And I don't mm -hmm. even bother to translate them. I just delete them. Mm -hmm. All right. 
any any other topics we need to discuss today. Uh, I'm going to get you the link for that Jev 11 one, but otherwise we're good. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Let's call on into the session. I'll post a recording, a link to the recording, and put the recording available on Discourse within the next 24 hours. Bye.